Right, now today we're going to look at uh, sinking funds. This is done from, from Melbourne, so I'm actually not at home, so hence the t-shirt. Anyway, this is the last part of the course, so we're looking at how a sinking fund works. We're still looking at how to reduce debt, and there are a couple of ways you can do it. Um, we have to discuss a couple, and we actually have to work one out. So the sinking fund is the working out one, and we've got some ones that we can discuss. You can set up a thing called an offset account to reduce your debt. What happens in here, you put some money away as a savings, but you don't earn any interest on it. That interest is transferred across to your loan and reduces the amount of interest that you pay on your loan per month. Now, for them to be really effective, you actually have to have a lot of money in your savings account um, to be able to reduce that interest. So normally what people will try to do is to actually put the money, instead of saving it, they'll put it straight onto their loan, hence reduce the interest that way. There's another one that a lot of people uh, have used, some quite successfully and some quite not, or some terribly, and that's a line of credit. A line of credit, what you do is you put all your money into your home loan, everything you get paid, and then you use a credit card attached to your home loan to do your weekly and monthly bills and things like that. If you are disciplined, what happens is the amount of interest you pay each month drops, and therefore your loan drops quickly. If you're not disciplined, your loan doesn't go anywhere because you end up spending all your money anyway and you stay with a huge debt and at the end of the day you can't pay it off. So if you're disciplined they work well, if not they're shocking. The last thing we're going to look at is a thing called a sinking fund. Now businesses use these uh, and they work quite well. Basically what happens is um, in a sinking fund it gives an intra a, a, the, a company the flexibility to be able to pay the loan off differently while claiming tax deductions on the interest that they pay. Probably the best way to do it is to look at an example um, and explain how it works for that example. And they're very similar in, in a test situation. So in a sinking fund, what happens is you set up two accounts. One is your loan. Now your loan will be just interest only. So all you do is you pay your interest on your loan. So it stays the same for the whole time that you have the loan sitting there. It doesn't go down. It just stays the same because you pay the interest. Then you set up a sinking fund, which is basically a future value account. Now in that future value account, you're saving money up, so at the end of the loan term, you have the same amount of money as what the loan is, and then you pay it off. So you just transfer the money across and it pays off the debt. So you set up a future value account to save the money, and you keep the loan at the same amount because you just keep on paying the interest. So if you have a look at this graph, You've got your loan, which you originally take out, say, for $10,000, and that will always stay at $10,000. Then over the four years, your sinking fund slowly grows, it's a future value annuity, slowly grows and slowly grows until it is the same size as what your debt is, and then the money from here is taken and just paid across here and wipes out your debt in one hit. So it's quite simple. So let's have a look at a question to see how it works. You've got a loan for $10,000 and it has an interest rate of 9% over the three years. Interest is calculated uh, monthly and you're only paying interest only payments each month. At the end of the three years, the $10,000 is to be repaid. A sinking fund is set up with, mostly, with monthly deposits to be made. Interest is calculated to the sinking fund at 6% per annum, compounded monthly. So, how much interest is paid on a loan? Calculate the monthly repayments needed to pay off the sinking fund. What's the total cost to the borrower? What's the total lost cost to the lender? Why is there a difference between the two? And what's the book value of the debt after one year? A lot of questions, let's work through one by one. How much interest is paid on the loan monthly? So what you're doing is you're just paying the interest, not paying off principal. So we treat it as a simple interest question, which is I equals PRT over 100. So $10,000 is your principal, nine is your rate, and your time is 1 over 12 because it's monthly, remembering it's got to be per year, 1 over 12 because it's monthly, then divided by 100, which gives us $75 per month has to be paid on the loan. And all that does is pay the interest, it doesn't pay any of the principal off. So that loan, after the three years, four years, five years, whatever it's for, will actually end up being the same as what you started with. Calculate the monthly repayments needed for the sinking fund. So now you set up the other account, which then pays, which grows, so you've got the same amount as what your loan is. So, of course, it's a future value question. N being 3 times 12, I being 6, payment you don't know, future value is being 10,000, 
payments per year and compounding groups per year being 12. Put it into the calculator and you'll end up with $254.22 per month. So you put that in to your account, after the three years you've got your $10,000 and you get rid of your debt. What's the total cost of the borrower, which is you? You need to work out how much you pay in interest on the loan. So you have $75 per month, 12 months in a year, for three years. So it ends up being $2,700 that you pay just to keep that loan at $10,000. You need to add the money to the sinking fund. So your sinking fund, you've got $254.22, 12 months, three years, $9,151.92. Add the two together, so you'll be paying $11,851.92 to pay off that debt. So how much it will cost you. What's the total cost to the lender? Well, the lender gets the $10,000 back plus the $2,700 in interest. So together, the lender gets $12,700. The difference between the two is the interest that you earn on the sinking fund, because you've only paid $11,851, whereas the lender gets $12,700. There's a discrepancy there, and that's because as you're putting money into the sinking fund, it's earning interest. So it saves you money in the long run. The last part. What is the book value of the debt after one year? Book value just means if the whole thing went belly up and you had to shut it down, how much would you have to pay to close the whole thing off? So that is an outstanding balance question. So how much have you got in your, in your sinking fund after the year? So PM1, PM2 and the rest. PM2 being 1 times by 12, 12 months. M36, I6, your payment you've got from the bit before and your future value is 10,000. So you work out that your balance is $3,135.94. So you save that much up after a year. So to work out how much the book value of the debt, or how much you owe, well, your original debt is $10,000. You've saved $3,135.94. So it means the book value of the debt is $6,864.06. You just go $10,000, take the amount of money that is in the future value account at that time. And that's how you work out a sinking fund question. And most of the questions are structured like that.